We're joined today by WWE superstar Ricochet. He'll be coming to the Mayo Civic Center in Rochester with the WWE coming up on December 17th. Ricochet, how you doing today? Doing great. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for joining me. No problem. Well, I know WWE is returning to uh, the Mayo Civic Center in Rochester here coming up December 17th. Uh, it seems like these non televised shows are are always a great time like maybe there's less pressure or or more chance for for you guys to have fun on shows like this yeah i mean i think it gives us an opportunity to really focus on the live audience you know every you know raw and smackdown there's cameras everywhere that we have to you know be aware of also being aware of the the live crowd there as well so there's just a lot more on our plate and i think you know the live events help it's a little more intimate, they say, you know, it's, it's just us and the fans. So yeah, we get to go out there and you really focus on them and reacting to them as much as they're reacting to us and really giving them what they want. Cause a lot of the crowd is, you know, different. So some of them like action, some of them, you know, they are there to see the action, but some, you go to some crowds and they're there to see the, the characters and the stories or, you know, so it's all different. So, uh, they definitely let us give it a little different feel for sure. Well, do you know who you might be uh, working with here coming up in Rochester? Uh, I do not yet. Um, probably coming up a little closer, they'll let us know. But uh, at the moment, no, it's a surprise to me, too. <laughs> well, can you talk a bit about, I guess, the atmosphere at WWE now? I mean, you've got new ownership, uh, new people in charge. Uh, you know, the company is holding a lot of big events um, internationally. And CM Punk just came back. I mean, it really seems like an exciting time yeah. to be where you are. Yeah, I think. I think maybe now more than ever, you know, it's, it's hard to say because I mean, there's been so many exciting times in professional wrestling, but it really just feels like now more than ever, it's, it's really starting to, you know, maybe just be one of those times in wrestling, I guess, that they always talk about. And it really feels like that. And I think everybody, you know, collectively, even backstage, they also feel it too. They feel like there's a rumbling really about to start happening. And uh, yeah, I mean, like you said, the atmosphere is, is, is crazy and, and, you know, you can really feel that when you, the the, the crowds are starting to grow and even the the live events and everything, it's really starting to grow. Every, everything is really starting to just, you can really see it happening in front of your eyes, especially I've been here for, I guess, since 2019 on, you know, Ron Smackdown. So from now, from there until now, you can really see how everything's just starting to grow and come together piece by piece. And so it's, I don't know. It's, it's it's a crazy time right now. It's one of those crazy times that everyone always talks about. Yeah, and it hasn't been uh, too long for you. I think maybe coming up on six years total that you've been with uh, WWE, and you've already done yes. a lot. Uh, you know, in that short amount of time, uh, you've really made your mark. I think it's amazing uh, the the career you've had here in just a few short years. Well, I mean, thank you so much. I mean, that hearing you say that means a lot to me. Uh, obviously, we all try to you know, like you said, make our mark and, you know, put our imprint in the history of WWE because, you know, that's, that's what we want to do. You know, we want to cement our legacy that, as they say. And so, um, yeah, I, I've only been here for, you know, yeah, six years, maybe. So in those six years I I have been, it's been like a mission of mine to like, literally like, so they say like be the highlight of the night, you know, every single time I'm out there. And so I'm, I'm to hear you say that really means a lot. Cause that's, that's really, I, I want to do it for you guys. I want to, you know, I don't know. It really is like, I want to do it for you guys. So thank you so much. Definitely. And again, uh, WWE is coming to the Mayo civic center in Rochester, December 17th. We're here with Ricochet. And, you know, before you came to WWE, you really paid your dues and, you know, places like new Japan and, and dragon gate, and, you know, coming up through the blood and the tears, I guess you could say of the independent scene and, how important oh, yeah. do you think that is uh, for wrestlers to to have that experience in, instead of maybe just uh, coming to uh, WWE straight away? Uh, I mean, I think it's so funny because I think everyone has different journeys because I feel like to to just make it to the WWE in general, whether it's the NIL or whether it's through the Indies or whether it's through a scout or whether what a, a tryout, whatever it is, I think to be here, you have had to work. I was trying not to cuss. You, you, you've had to work really hard at something for a long time. I feel like whatever that something is for you, you know what I mean? And for example, I like some of the kids coming up through the NIL deal. They've had to probably since they were 
infants been put in some specific sport and been the best at that specific sport, you know what I mean, to get looked at, to, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I think everyone has their different different ways into the WWE, but I mean, just from, from my experience and my, my path, I think it was, it's, I wouldn't have changed, I wouldn't change it for the world. I think to be able to get the experience with the, 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 the audience, the, the crowd, because, you know, like you said, I've in Japan and I've been in Mexico and I've been to Europe and I've been to Australia and I've, you know what I mean? So I've, I've been all around the world with different audiences. So you can really feed off of them. And again, like get, get that experience to bring to, to then put all of it together and collectively bring it to the WWE, you know, for whatever package they want to present. Sure. And so there is something to that, but also there is something to coming in as, you know, a highly, highly, highly trained and scouted athlete. And then for them to be able to then create something from nothing, but already have the base of a, a fantastic athlete. So, and then they can teach you along the way, you know, uh, through the NXT and everything. So uh, there's just different ways and it's, 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 there's benefits to both really there's benefits and cons to both. But from, from my personal experience, man, I wouldn't change it for the world. Well, I know the Royal rumble is coming up here soon. Uh, can you talk a bit about oh, last yeah. year's Royal rumble and you know, that famous spot with Logan Paul, I can't imagine, you know, the anxiety of knowing you're going to be doing something with a high profile celebrity that a, a billion people are going to be watching on YouTube. Um, I don't even think about that stuff. And I know that's even how it's like promoted and stuff. And I know the caliber of, you know, the audience he brings and the audience that the WWE already has and that collectively together. I mean, I, I, I do understand all that, but I don't even honestly think about that. I, I, I don't when I like, as soon as I walk through the curtain, I'm like on a mission to like, you know, just do what Ricochet does best. I'm just on a mission. You know what I mean? So everything else kind of just clears from my mind, good, bad, ugly, every like kind of clears from my mind. And I'm just, I'm like tunnel vision when I'm out there. So the, and I was thinking like Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant always, you know, he says like, you know, when you're in the finals and you're shooting that shot and with, you know, 0.4 seconds left, it's like, he said, he's like, I've been here a thousand, maybe a million times, you know, like I've been here since he was a kid making this same shot. I've already made this shot so many times he goes this is no different than those you know and you just gotta i don't know that's just how i approach it but um i think maybe all of that stuff maybe helps me all of those all of those factors those those stress factors they say maybe that helps me perform better i think maybe under the the big lights maybe that's where i perform best i don't know but for some reason i just when i get out there i'm a man on a mission to like (laughs) just entertain i guess well, with that being said, I wanted to ask you, I guess, uh, outside of the ring, I mean, how are you keeping yourself in one piece? You know, with the stuff you're doing in the ring, I, I got to imagine the work <laughs> outside of the ring is, you know, make a tree, don't get injured. That's probably a full-time job in itself. Yeah, it's actually funny because, like, when people talk to, you know, Sam, Sam, Samantha Irvin about me, they're always like, they always say something to the effect of, like, Oh, how is he at the house? I bet he's just flipping all over this, all over everything. <laughs> and she's like, no, he actually is the slowest man on earth. He walks so slow and he does everything so slow. And like, cause I just really, when I'm at home, like that's how I am. Like we chill, we relax. Obviously I go to the gym, you know, we try to take care of our bodies as much as possible, whether it's through our diet, our exercise routine, you know, maintenance, whether that's chiropractor, physios, you know, we, I stay, you know, up to date on all of that stuff. That is something that I, you know, put a lot of effort into. But, um, other than that, yeah, I do try to live like I'm chill, man. I'm chilling. I, uh, I don't do a, as much crazy stuff as I used to when I was younger. Like I don't like biking and like skydiving and all the stuff I used to do. I just, I kind of don't do any of that stuff anymore. Well, again, um, you're going to be coming here to Rochester on December 17th and of course, uh, the new year is coming up. Who are you hoping to, to work with here oh, and yeah. maybe in the next year that you haven't worked with before? Uh, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's always that's the, the, the million-dollar question everybody has, but that's the thing. There's so many guys now, new and old, that's, that are here on our roster that are 
capable of really being in any spot on the card, you know, because I feel like right now the uh, the roster that we have is just full of talent, whether that's the first match or the last match, the, the match before intermission, the match after intermission, like whatever match is going to be, it's like most likely it's going to be so good because everybody we have is just so, you know, so good. But um, I don't know. It's, it's, I feel like I've been here a while and I've, I've kind of wrestled everybody, but there's a couple of you guys, you got your eye on, you know, there's a couple of champions out there that, you know, you got your eye on. And um, for me, I feel like I, uh, I'm always ready for any kind of competition that's going to benefit me. So anybody that wants to step up, I'm really, I'm really cool with anybody. Yeah. I've seen who I'm wrestling. Ricochet is always in there with the toughest, whether it's a Drew McIntyre or Bobby Lashley or uh I'm always a Bronson Reed or like, I'm always in there with the biggest guys anyway. So it don't really matter to me. Let's go. Wonderful. Again, uh, Ricochet, it's great watching you on the ring and I'm looking forward to seeing you here coming up in Rochester. Thank you so much for joining me. No problem. Thank you guys for having me. And again, that was WWE superstar Ricochet. He'll be with the WWE coming to the Mayo civic center in Rochester on December 17th.